you're in northern India and this and, and, and one of the camps that you've set up and this wonderful little puppy just comes running towards you. Explain that moment. What happened at that dump site? I was sitting there talking to a friend of mine and sort of, you know, talking about, you know, how sad the scene is and how depressing it was. And all the dogs had sort of run away from us. And then out of the middle of nowhere, literally, this little puppy came stumbling, running towards me, almost like he had a mission, and then literally collapsed right next to me. And I can honestly say that, you know, he was probably about six or seven months old and probably had not eaten or had water for, you know, at least at least a couple of weeks, if not longer than that. And he was probably going to die within the hour. Not to sound dramatic, he really was weak and, and on his last legs. Don't go out of my way to try and find and adopt dogs in foreign countries because it's quite a mission to actually bring them back to, you know, the States or to South Africa. So the fact that this dog came running to me and was in such bad shape, you know, I just, I was like, you know, um, I can't just turn away from this. How did you come up with this idea to scale Mount Everest with your dog? There's an estimated 375 million homeless dogs on the planet. And, you know, um, it's, it's really my passion to try and do things that raise awareness, to say to people that want to acquire a dog, it goes to your local shelter and give a great dog that's already here, you know, a second chance. Um, it, of course, it was an epic journey. It actually took 13 days. It was nine days to get up and actually uh, just under four days to get down because it takes a lot longer to get up because you have to acclimatize and also walking uphill and steep uphill is a lot longer and harder than going down. But it was just we had we had a bit of everything thrown at us. It was really one of the adventures of a lifetime in a way. As incredible as this achievement is, there are some people who say, did you really have to take the dog to the top with you? Was that fair to, to Rupi? How do you answer any criticism about that? The dog's welfare would always come first. So if there was any sign that Rupi was going to be struggling or wasn't handling it, we would turn around and go back down. There's no way that I would put um, Rupi's life you know, in jeopardy. And in fact, I actually organized an extra porter for our trick so that if he did kind of get tired or needed a, you know, needed a helping hand, that he would be carried up and carried down. So, you know, uh, it was amazing how well he did. And um, I think he absolutely loved it.